Well, I, um, I spent the last uh, week, I can't say the whole week, I've spent quite a bit of time on trying to figure out how it is that we got so far off in understanding when we think that our Heavenly Father would step in and do something. And um, so I've kind of search, searched Scripture, and I'm going to give you what I came up with. And uh, I'll have you, of course, you don't take my word for it, I'm going to tell you it is what it is that I see and what it is that I believe. But again, you can't take my word for it. Uh, folks, greetings to all of you and welcome here. Um, a few people have said, Ross, you didn't make a video in the middle of the week. Uh, only if I see something that it pertains to Bible prophecy of end times. Otherwise, the news is just the news and it's everywhere. So uh, I can discuss the news only in a way that it pertains to scripture at this time. So uh, Israel is definitely at a war. The war is described in Psalm 83. Uh, there's an action to be taking place, and this action will be by God. And uh, it will be God interfering in the works of man in a spiritual way. And uh, that's seen in Psalms 83 also. It's talked about in 1 Thessalonians 5.3 as a sudden destruction. So now, as we put all of this together, uh, news as it pertains to Bible prophecy of end times, we go all the way back to the beginning of this channel and what it was uh, that I had commented on the Revelation 12 sign. And that was the stars in, in the heaven and they aligned in a certain way that said we should be paying attention. And so we did. Now we've been very vigilant and been working at it very hard and come to the realization only a couple of years in that, you know, starting back in, in 2017, a couple of years in of studying that as time went on, things are revealed to us. It, it wasn't revealed before that. And so some of the things that we had said, we had figured, um, you know, we just had it figured wrong because we didn't have all the information. Well, we've got a lot of information right now. And again, we're back down to that question, is how is it that we missed and we're off so far and what we, when we thought that the rapture would happen. And then again, I'm going to remind you, uh, for many years, it's been my intent to try to discover when the actual covenant enforcement would be done, read in Daniel 9.27, and, uh, because that's the start of the last seven years or the tribulation period. But I begin to realize that it aligns right along with, if not very close to, the rapture. So then I begin to start talking more about the rapture. And uh, that's where we are today. How can it be that we're that far off? All right. So in order for me to um, explain to you what you know, that I have read and I have understood now, uh, I'm going to have to back up a little bit because there's certain things that you have to know. Most of you remember... <clears throat> Of course, you would remember May, May 14th, 1948, Israel became a nation again in just one day. And that was very significant because there was scripture to support that. And that scripture was, uh, just to um, mostly paraphrase here and just to, to go over quickly with you, Isaiah 6, 66, right here, <clears throat> 6 and 8, for a voice from the city, uh, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord, that rendereth a compense, a recompense to his enemies. And it says right here, before she travailed, before she travailed, please understand this, she brought forth, uh, before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Who's the man-child then? I have it right here. If this is a test, you already got the answer, didn't you? Okay. It's our Lord Jesus' ascension into heaven, completion of his work. And so who hath heard of such a thing? Who has seen such a thing? Uh, shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Here we goes our understanding. Uh, or shall a nation be born at once in one day? Uh, for as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her child. Church, um, hold on right there. One second, folks. Um, because I said this was uh, involving Revelation 12. Okay. Revelation 12. Here it was, it was told. 
right from the very beginning. Okay, let's go down here. Uh, and she brought forth a man-child. It's a man-child, Isaiah 66. The man-child, who was to rule all the nations with the rod of iron. This is our Lord Jesus Christ that's being talked about here. And then with the rod of iron. And her child then, so this would be the other part then, her child would be caught up unto God. And then onto the throne, and there's the rapture right there in Revelation 12. All right, so let me go on here, because this needs to be clearly understood to put everything, again, a time, a time clock. We have to know in God's time clock where things are happening, and if we can fit them in, it'll let us know where we are. Well, we've been thinking this for quite a while, that the rapture should have happened by now. But we haven't been accurate because we haven't had all the information that we need. So let's continue. I want to continue with this because it's, I think it's important for us to see and will help to align where we are in God's prophetic time clock. All right, Ezekiel 37, and this is going to be coming important here in our discussions here in a few minutes. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood upon uh, their feet. Now, Ezekiel 37 is, of course, the dry bones. Uh, we, we know that. So talking about Israel coming back alive again, brought back into its land again, after being scattered throughout the nations is just the most absolutely marvelous thing. I mean, never heard of something like that before. And, and then even brought back to their original language. That's incredible. It was God doing that, of course. So, it came to them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet. And now listen, right here, he throws this in here. An exceedingly great army. Well, this is today. Do you see how we can put things into an alignment here of where we are? Okay, so just a little bit more. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, saith the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And as, as many times as I've told you, take the scripture as literal as you possibly can. This is one of those times where we're not going to be able to. But it does give us an understanding of who he's talking about. Something that was once thought to have been rendered completely dead is now back on its feet and back into the land again. All right. And I shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall... Uh, be placed in your own land. All right, so <clears throat> we have to understand, now I have to go back into time. And, uh, of course, Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt and into their promised land. Well, when they did, you got 12 tribes there. And, of course, the 12 tribes spread out. Let's see if I can make that a little bit more clear here. <clears throat> so I'm going backwards into time greatly. Okay, here. Oops, I didn't press the button. Okay, let's see. Can I focus that in just a little bit more? Let it do its thing here. All right, so here's the tribe spread out. And one in notice here is going to be Judah, because we're going to be talking about that here in just a short period of time. Judah. But you're going to see these are the, basically the tribes in the different places. So you have Moab here. And then you come up here to um, Ammon, come down here to uh, Edom. Over here, then, this is the Palestinians right here, Palestine, Gaza. Okay, so you can come up all the way up here. This is Tyre. And so my point is, is you see how they spread out throughout the land. And you see right here, uh, Aram right here. And you're also going to see this land that they, in were involved with, that Israel was involved with. Of course, here's Damascus. And then you're going to come down here, and you're going to see this is where Jordan is. Okay, so let's make some sense out of that if we can. Hang on one second here. Let me take you over to Psalms 83. And here it is right here. Psalms 83 is talking about something that these enemies, that they're raising their head. This is today. Taking crafty counsel against the hidden ones we see as the hostages, I do believe that firmly. Okay, they have said, come and let us cut you off from being a nation. That's happening today. 
for they have consulted together with one consent or confederate against thee. This is going to start making more sense here in just a minute. The tabernacles of, here we go. So Asaph, the psalmist here, is actually describing exactly that area of time and that area and places right there. Edom, Ishmaelites, Moab, Hagarines, so it goes Ammon, uh, here's Tyre. So you can understand now that Israel's is brought back into its land and where that land is, and now you can start making your comparisons today of this area. So this is important to understand that he was talking about the Israelites at that time brought back into their land, and now you know where they are. But then again, now we go shooting into the future, and we see in Isaiah 66 and Ezekiel 37 that they're talking about a time today. And remember, the exceedingly great army that puts you into God's prophetic time clock. So, folks, we, we're not off here. Okay, we're just not off. Let me go back to... Ezekiel 37, this is building, folks. I'm going to keep putting this together until it does build and make sense to you. Okay. So, uh, now, here it is in Ezekiel 37, when it first starts, right, right here. Uh, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit, uh, uh, in the spirit of the Lord, uh, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which were full of bones. Okay, that's so now you understand that's what I was talking about a few minutes ago. <clears throat> okay, 16. The sticks here are important to understand, and I've got a lengthy study on that. And uh, I'm not going to show you that because we'd go into great detail, but I'm going to draw to a conclusion here. Uh, if any of you want that study, uh, I don't know how I'd get it to you, maybe PDF or something, but um, anyway. Um, no, man, I better take, take that back. I wouldn't know how to do that. I wouldn't know how to get you my notes. But, okay, never mind. I, I just studied this, and this is my understanding I'm going to give you here in a minute. Moreover, thou son uh, of man, take these uh, one, take one stick and write upon it Judah. And I showed you that map just a minute ago, and Judah was basically southern Israel today. And for the children of the Israelite, uh, for Israel, his companions, then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph in the stick of Ephraim and for all the house of Israel and its companions, okay? Let's take a minute to understand that now. The way that's working is, is that's the 12 tribes, and Ephraim is being spoken of is 10 tribes. And the 10 tribes in Israel ended up dividing from two other tribes, and that's where you got Israel at one time, a north and a south. And that's Israel then was a divided land. And so we have to remember that this is going to be spoken of in Scripture, but it's going to be back in another time. And then, is, then, then God scattered them from their land. And, but, okay, so we understand. Let me, uh, 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 the two sticks, okay. <laughs> I almost got, forgot about that. The two sticks are going to be talked about here in the future now. Because they're going to be combining together and there's not going to be any more, uh, you know, fighting between them. The tribes will come together. They're going to be reunited. And this is something that, believe it or not, God is in the process of doing and is going to do. So I want to come down here to 3722. So you understand now, you know, the division of Israel. Okay. And I will make them one nation. The two sticks, the 12 tribes. In the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations. Okay, so I'm going to bring them all together. They won't be two nations any longer. What are we talking about? That one time where God said in Isaiah 66 and Ezekiel also said it, that the nation would be formed in one day and be brought back into their land again. Okay, but here, and I, and I want to emphasize this, because a lot of people think two state, and that's going to be the key today in today's understanding. Um, Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Okay, he's going to bring the two together, the two sticks together, the, the, the ten and the two, and then they're going to become as one brought back into their land again, and from that point on, there shall never be any more dividing. <clears throat> all right, let's... um. Let's continue here. 
Give me one second. Uh, the crust of the pie goes into the pan first. Let's go ahead and get the very basis of what's going on here. Uh, and here it comes. I'm, I'm going to try to make my point now, if I possibly can. <clears throat> now the burden of the word, <laughs> uh, this is not the burden of the Lord, burden of the word of the Lord, for Israel saith, the Lord which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundations of the earth and um, formeth the spirit of man within him. Uh, my notes aren't important right now. Uh, you can read those if you want, but that's not the important part. So this is at a given time now where this burden, so this is scripture unfolding. Let's understand this. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people around about. Let's remember Psalm 83, what he was talking about, and I showed you the area, and those would be the enemies of Israel that are surrounding Israel, and of course includes Palestine, that they shall be in siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. So he's talking about those that were in a division at one time, but now, Judah is going to be dealt with here. Let me, um, <clears throat> hang on one second, let me find that again. Give me one second, I don't know how this happens all the time. Okay, here it is. Now, this is Palestine right over here, the Palestinians, this is Gaza over here, okay? Here's Judah. So, so you have, again, which was once divided will be brought back together again. So this is part of what was known as the burden of the word. So God is going to be doing something to them that uh, enables them to come back together again once you have Psalm 83. So Psalm 83 shows an action of God. We see in 1 Thessalonians 5, Paul talks about it, but he talks about a sudden destruction. Well, that's Psalm 83 and what God's going to do. Now, we've established this, and we said we understand this, but when was it going to happen? All right, so I said, well, let me keep on going here, if I can. Uh, so Jerusalem, a cup of trembling unto all and round the people about, and they shall be in siege against Judah. <laughs> they definitely are right now. And against Jerusalem. Here it comes against Jerusalem. Now remember all this action that's taking place is about the church. This is about the believers, the Jews that believe Jesus is their Messiah. And then of course uh, us Gentiles. And in that day <laughs> I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all the people that burden themselves uh, with it shall be cut into pieces though all the people of the earth be gathered against it. And what are we seeing in the news today? That it's not only just everybody wanting to, um, to be on the side of the Palestinians. Well, you, you can't do that to the Palestinians. That, that's their land and they got to live there. Uh, where are they going to go if, 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 if you were to run them out of there, if you were to you know, say that go, you know, scatter, or if Israel should take over that and it all becomes Israel's land. So that can't happen. And so there's, you know, um, protesting, there's rioting, there's countries, uh, nations, and they're all building up against this idea of what's going to happen at the end of this war. Because Israel has to decide what to do with that land, and they don't want Israel to have that land. And that's the burden of Israel that it has right now. So is Israel winning the war in Gaza? I think that's very obvious. And it's not going to be that much longer, I think, before we get the word that it's possible that the hostages are located. So at some specific time, we're talking about bringing an end to what's happening within the Palestinian area right now, the Gaza Strip. And when that happens, coming to an end, would they be saying peace and safety? Again, 1 Thessalonians 5.3, and we have said yes. It's possible because those that are evacuated from their house, <clears throat> from their houses, 
along the border of the Gaza Strip and uh, Israel and also the border up north, Hezbollah. So again, we're back to, as we're seeing here, <clears throat> we're seeing here, for all that burden themselves with it, it shall be cut into pieces. That's very interesting. Because here's the thing. Now, let me just finish this and then I'll, then I'll go into a little bit more commentary on it. Though all the people of the earth be gathered against it. And in that day, said the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment. Now, obviously, this can be a tank. It can be an aircraft. It can be a missile. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, this is the days of old that they were speaking of horses here. They wouldn't have any idea if he said a tank. So we understand that then. We'll strike it with astonishment. And the rider, those that are doing the warring right here, um, with madness. And I will open up mine eyes upon the house of Judah. Now, remember, there was a split in there. And, um, and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. Now, this has to do with maybe, I'm, and I thought this myself, this is just basically me, me throwing it out there, but say for instance if the GPS quit, what happens if all of the internet went dead for a short period of time? What happens if all their communications between their equipment went bad for a short period of time? All right. God's responsibility, and it's the burden of the word, God said what he was going to do and how he was going to do it. We just went over that in great detail. Now here it comes. This is, I want to gather all this information that I gave you now, and I want to come to one point. And that is, is right now the United States is pushing. They're not asking Israel into a two-state solution. We have other nations uh, from the Arab world to UK to the UN that are saying, you know, that land right now that you're warring over Israel, you're going to have to give that to the Palestinians. And Israel right now, in that great, you know, exceedingly strong army, and Ezekiel spoke of, is winning. It's funny because that was thrown in there by Ezekiel the same time that he was talking about Israel, you know, being brought back into its land again, a nation. And But he said, but they end up having this great, exceedingly strong army. And they're working. It's, it's working. They're, as far as I'm concerned, the best I can tell, they're winning. All right, so all these nations are telling Israel, you're going to have to give in to the Palestinians whether you win the war or not. So Israel's going to have to, again, divide its land. All right, hold on one second here, folks. Uh, let me go over to it. <clears throat> right here and I will make them a nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel they shall be as one king when our Lord Jesus Christ returns at the end of the tribulation to them all and they shall be no more two nations that should be starting to align neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore anybody that is thinking that towards the end of this war, which everyone is all concerned about, they're burdening themselves with it. This Jerusalem thing is becoming a cup of trembling. How is this going to work out? What's going to be the end of it? And this is Sunday. We're getting another train. Isn't that the most wonderful thing? <laughs> I kind of enjoy it. It's far enough away it's not annoying. Uh, sometimes kind of peaceful in a way. So back to what I was saying. This burdensome stone, this, 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 is happening to Israel right now that they are under this extreme pressure and they're in the middle of deciding whether they should divide Israel with the Palestinians when it is very clear that through Scripture when God steps in all that land that Asaph the prophet said was going to be gained that God was going to smite their horse with blindness and is going to stop them Whatever it is that they plan on doing to pressure Israel into dividing its land again, shown to us by Ezekiel, shown us by Zechariah, uh, by Psalm 83, by Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5, that when this sudden destruction come upon them, 
Okay, let me wrap this up. So if you're understanding why the rapture hasn't happened yet, for the very thing that's been described and told to us, and Ezekiel is not completed yet, for as they are to about attempt Israel to be divided. So what's really curious about that, it's almost not even really about the Gaza war. What it's really all about, the rapture, the timing of it, the timing of building the last, um, you know, the covenant that's to be put into place. Hang on one second here. As they keep on pressuring Israel, when they start forcing Israel, when it looks like Israel may be caving in on this, which it does look like they are, the peace treaty, true ceasefire, etc., because they're worried, they, all the other countries, great condemnation from a global standpoint. The, the uh, UN right now is adamant about this, that Israel does not get that land. But yet Israel is told by Ezekiel that land will never be divided again. And here we find it in, Revel, uh, in um, Zechariah 12, that when that burden comes upon Israel, that they should be at a point to where they're going to be divided, God's going to step in, and there's my whole point of all of this. But without understanding all the rest, it really wouldn't make a lot of sense. But it does to me. So we have a little more time left before our Heavenly Father decides that he's going to step in. And it help me to those in prayers to him that think that they're going to divide Israel. So whatever they're saying, whoever's saying it, how it's going to turn out is absolutely all that information is moot today. It doesn't even need to be in the news. Scratch it. Take it out. We already know what's going to happen to the land of Israel. That's been told in Scripture right before us. So now we have it given to us. But folks, it could not be revealed to us until we got closer. Closer to the end. And now we're beginning to realize. And Zechariah told us in there that burdensome where they make Israel this big, it's a burdensome stone to all, to everyone. I mean, what was it, over 180-some nations within the UN condemned Israel. I mean, in, in South Africa, the, you know, the International Court of Justice is, <clears throat> you know, trying to get Israel, you know, making a notion that they, they have to quit warring, that they have to give up that land to, to the Palestinians right now. They don't want to have this land that Israel might be able to control. It looks like Israel's about ready to. And there's the big burdensome stone. That's the whole thing that everyone is all worried about right now. All the nations, exactly what Zechariah described. So folks, there's some reading for you to do, some scripture to go back over again. The very best to all of you. Uh, God blessing to all of you. In Jesus' name I pray that are searching, as you folks are, uh, that, that it'll be given to you to understand this. And also the patience to just continue to wait until our Heavenly Father says and makes up his mind. And that is what Daniel said. That, that that last seven years of the tribulation, folks, that was all about, you know, when God, it's his decision when he steps in. And then that covenant will be made that's talked about in Daniel 9.27. So it all unfolds, doesn't it? It all comes together. And so back to continuing, let me finish the prayer understanding to all of you in Jesus name I pray for all of you that this starts to make sense and we continue with our patience Heavenly Father thank you for all the things that you've given us Amen so let's go on from there um, again just a quick little side note not all that important uh, folks and, and I just don't make videos to be making videos they, they have to have something about the Word of God aligning with end times so please, I, I feel kind of bad in a way that many of you said, Ross, where were you? I wanted to see you in the middle of the week. Sorry. Um, I don't know. Maybe I can make a fun video or something. You know, I, I don't know what to do there because I just didn't see anything that was so important to really, you know, other than if you wanted to get the whole picture, and hopefully I've given you that. So let's go from there uh, until next Sunday, and um, we'll take it from there. Folks, again, thank you. Thanks for all your kind words stopping in. And I appreciate your replies. It's how I also learn, and I also consider it close fellowship. Thanks again.